Welcome back to my basement YouTube. Um, it's time for us to clean out our water softener system here at the Green Acre. I have let my system uh, run out of salt and you can see at the bottom there is a mixture of salt, water, dirt, grime. Uh, as clean as your salt crystals may appear, they do still have contaminants in them that will build up over time in the bottom of your resin tank. Or, your, sorry, your brine tank. Um, I do use a Pro Products Res Care uh, system here. So we fill this bottle up with their uh, resin care solution. And then it has a wicking rope here that goes down into the float valve tube. And every time that the system regenerates, this is your resin uh, cylinder here. Uh, it sends water, uh, a salt water mix, up through this that cleans or it, it, it uh, attracts the contaminants that this system pulls from your water, and then it flushes it through this tubing network here into the sink and down the drain. It, it flushes the contaminants out of the system. So whenever you run water the water will run through this system here and any contaminants that are in the water that, that make the water hard, the minerals and everything uh, adhere to those um, salt particles that are in the salt water and uh, every time it regenerates it flushes the system and cleans it. Now the salt does a good job of that but it doesn't completely clean out this resin tank and over time uh, your resin tank will build up uh, contaminants, iron and, and other stuff that will make it just perform less efficiently. So this is a cheap solution to keeping your expensive salt water or, uh, softener system running at peak performance for many years to come. What I'm going to do here, uh, as I said, I let, I let my salt run out and I'm left with a bunch of grime down here. So I'm going to shop vag this out and get rid of that nasty stuff. While I'm doing that, I'm going to pull this uh, wicking tube out and submerge it in water so that when we refill this with the resin solution it'll uh, wick easier in, into the float valve tube there. So let's let's take that wick out quick and, and get that submerged. Okay, here is the uh, wick assembly. It does appear that it is uh, wet still, so I probably don't have to do this, but I'm going to anyway just in case uh, your system is, is dry, you know how to, how to correct the issue. Um, so I'm just going to wrap it up like this and stick it down in this container here that I filled with water. Alright, we'll just let that sit while we clean out the brine tank. I've got my shop vac. Uh, I took the filter out so I can suck up water with it now. I'm going to clean out the dirt and grime that's in the bottom of this tank. <laughs> vacuumed out all of the dirt and grime that was down in the bottom of our um, brine tank. So what I'm going to do is fill this halfway with new salt pellets. These are the pellets that I'm going to be using. Uh, Diamond Crystals Bright and Soft Salt Pellets for water softeners. The reason I'm using pellets as opposed to crystals is crystals sometimes have a tendency to form what is called a bridge. Um, there'll be a space, an open space at the bottom and a layer of salt uh, when a bridge occurs and when you look through the top of the tank and you look down you see salt in there and you assume oh I must have salt in there, it must be functioning properly but if it forms a bridge and it washes out the salt below it every time this fills up with water to uh, regenerate it's not getting any of that salt mixed in with it and your system's not functioning as it should be, you're pretty much you don't have a water softener anymore. So, bridging's a bad thing, you don't want that. These pellets are specially designed to prevent bridging. Um, so the way they fit together in the tank allows them to slip and slide past each other as opposed to interlocking like the crystals do. Um, and this will prevent bridging, so you'll never have uh, that issue in your tank. pellets look like. Oops. They're like little rectangular uh, salt pellets with rounded edges on them which allows them to slip and slide past each other as opposed to uh, interlocking and uh, causing a bridge. All 
All right, so I've got two 40-pound bags of uh, pellets in here. And that took us maybe a quarter of the way up. Um, I could probably put another 80 pounds of pellets in here to get us at the halfway mark. Um, but this will do just fine for quite a while. So, All right, next step is filling our resin, uh, our, our res care reservoir with uh, the res care solution which I have right here. I highly recommend this, uh, this system. It's pretty easy. You don't have to refill it too often. I think it's every couple months, uh, depending on how many ounces you're, you're running through your system. Uh, but like I said, it just keeps your system running at, at full uh, efficiency, which will save you money in the long run and, and keep, your, uh, keep your water nice and soft for a long time to come. All right, now that we've got the reservoir filled, it's time to put our wick back in. All right, I like to make sure that the wick is all the way to the bottom of the reservoir. So as this drops, you'll be using everything in this reservoir. Um, all the way down to the last drop. As you can see, or as you saw, when I pulled it out, it was completely bone dry, so it used every last strip of that. Alright, now the wick is installed, and because it's already saturated with water, it will start um, pulling fluid up and out of this reservoir down into the float valve uh, cylinder. So the next time that this regenerates, it will pull that fluid in along with all of our new salt, and it'll clean our resin cylinder. Most water, uh, water softener systems have a regen button on them. Uh, I could technically do that right now and it will regenerate the system live, but I know our system runs every morning around 2 a.m. ish, so I'm just going to let it sit and it will regenerate tonight. You may be wondering why on a channel about sustainability I'm talking about uh, maintaining a water softener. In today's day and age, we have a lot of uh, luxuries and a lot of comforts available to us. Are they necessary? No, absolutely not. Are they convenient? Yeah, sure. We like our modern amenities, and uh, we also choose to live a sustainable lifestyle. One of the things that I consider to be uh, sustainable is being wise with your money. So we have this system here. We want to keep it running as efficiently as possible so it lasts us a long time and we aren't throwing money away on, on repairs or replacing complete systems because we neglected to take a little bit of time out of our day and keep it maintaining at peak performance. So I wanted to share um, a quick tutorial, I guess, on, on uh, how to clean out your, your brine tank and your water softener should you have one. Um, it's a pretty simple procedure. Maybe do it once a year. Just clean out all that dirt and grime that, that builds up in the bottom of the tank. Um, as I said, I recommend getting that uh, resin cleaning. There's, there's multiple kits out there that you can choose from. You don't have to get the one that I necessarily uh, installed. But uh, just to have something that will clean out your resin tank is a good idea to keep it running efficiently. So hope you learned a little something and uh, I'm sure I'll produce some videos in the future on, on other appliances and, and how to keep them running efficiently as well. More money in your pocket is the more money you can put towards chickens or gardens or bees or other fun things like that uh, like we have here on the Green Acre. So like and subscribe. Let me know if you want to see any maintenance tips or suggestions on other stuff. Um, I'm a pretty handy guy. I like to do a lot of stuff myself. Uh, it's a good opportunity to learn and uh, understand your environment better and how to, how to take care of things. Knowledge is priceless. Take care everyone.